بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله continuing on our study of Sheikh <coughs> Bedr al Utaybi's treaties have mercy upon Salafia we reach in the beginning of the treaties where the Sheikh he mentioned <coughs> about the importance of practicing really practicing the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and practicing Salafiyyah and that requires understanding Salafiyyah and distinguishing yourself from Ahl Bid'ah by not co-opting their Qawaid and their Usul and their principles for example from amongst the Usul that we see from the Hizbiyin and this goes back to the early sex even the Khawarij the Khawarij used to make takfir of those who opposed them those who differed with them. How many people do you know they make tibdir of those who differ with them? And I want you to, to reflect upon that. That's not a qa'id of Ahl Sunnah. If I find someone who differs with me, and how many brothers do I know who differ with me that I don't make tibdir of them, even though they make tibdir of a sheikh that I uh, have benefited from and still believe is from Ahl Sunnah. Min kathir. There's many mashayikh who've been taken off the sunnah by some people, some individuals, even some ulama that we disagree and these are masail almiya. These are masail ijtihadiya. These are masail that are knowledge based and these are issues which are from ijtihad. And with that being the case, I don't make tibdi of them, but when I see kawaid bid'iya from them, then this is when it requires looking further, are they now mubtadi'a? Are they falling in? Yes, perhaps they may fall into some bid'ah even, because they make, they force other people to take their view and their opinion on uh, individuals. So the Shaykh said, and this is all in his introduction, he said, in this article I speak openly about what many of the Salafi brothers quietly think about. This is beautiful. Due to what they see from the many people who nowadays ascribe to Salafiyyah, whereas in reality these same people are harming it due to their disgusting actions and shameful statements to the extent that people insult pure Salafiyyah due to them. And people have turned away from Salafiyyah due to their harsh mannerisms, insults, and abuse. Look at that. Uh, do, does it really need uh, explanation of Habit how many of us have witnessed this firsthand in our various communities and have heard the countless stories around the world? And those of you from the UK and Europe especially, it's a whole different level there. The, the, the things I used to hear from my brothers coming out of Brixton and coming out of Birmingham and coming from this, from Croydon and Luton and this place and that place, it amazed me. It amazed me. People driving in cars, yelling out the window, Yah Hizbi! Yeah, and I've heard bits and pieces of some of the people who are supposed to be the main callers in the UK to Salafia, the things that they say out of their mouths about others. I, and I'll tell you this, just so you know about myself, since you're listening to this lecture, that I have not listened. I can't think, that's why I'm not the person really to ask about, do I? I can't, you can't ask me a lot about Salafi publications. You can't ask me a lot about Usama, uh, uh, Abu Usama Dhabi. You can't ask me a, a lot about so-and-so and so-and-so because I never listened to any of them. Because since I went to Yemen during the time of Imam Muqbil, I did not listen. I can say honestly, I don't know if I've completed more than a handful, literally. You could count them definitely on two fingers uh, English lectures since that time almost. I, I can't really think of, you know, when I, and at the time I went to Yemen, we used to listen to Suraj Wahaj, Imam Suraj, and stuff like this, which was far from Salafia, and we used to listen to uh, Abu Muslima and things like this. But since those days, I don't know. I never listened to the other people. I never had to go to Maktaba Salafia to get my Salafia. Instead, I went to where they got it from, to the ulama, because Allah favored me to be able to travel to those lands. So, it's very important, Habatifillah, that we are not confused and we don't follow the actions of people when the people are doing uh, extreme things and then they're claiming they're Salafi. 
Wallah Mista'an. The Shaykh says, yes, amongst the Salafis today are those who cause the people to flee and test the people in their religion. They harm the Salafi minhaj due to their disgusting statements and strange actions, due to their oppression and ignorance, in fact, due to their detested hizbiya for individuals and personalities, due to their criticizing people who, when the same matter is found in who they love, they do not criticize. SubhanAllah. And those of you, it, it goes without saying some of the many situations. How many double standards have we seen from people who are claiming Salafiya, but when their boy makes a mistake, those same mistakes that they made tibdi of other, of other du'at il al khair, they took them off the sunnah quickly, but when their people who are in their close crew, people who pay their dues to their organization, people who promote them do it, People who promote them on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media uh, sites, they'll let that pass and slide. They'll cover their faults. Where's this from Salafia? Isn't this the asal of what we criticize those Hizbis for all these years? Isn't those what our Mashaikh, Sheikh Imam Mukbil, and Sheikh Rabi' and, 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 and those greater in knowledge than them before them and after said the same? Imam Fozan. Imam Abdul Masjid al Abad. Many of our mashayikh, uh, 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 Imam uh, Salih Suhaimi, and the many, many ulama of Ahl Sunnah who've criticized those principles of Hizbiyah. But yet we, we continue on and persist in calling to ourselves and our groups and distorting the Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. So the Shaykh said, they harm the Salafi minhaj by propping up people as measures of association and disassociation and love and hatred to the extent that due to a person's closeness to them, they are given a certified pass to Salafiyyah. These people who they have propped up are not those whom the imams of the religion rely upon, neither are they themselves from the major well-known imams. It can almost be said that this is a detested hizbiyah in the cloak of Salafiyya. SubhanAllah. Yes, there is no flattery in the religion, nor is there any ambiguity in explaining the path of the believers. We may as well bid farewell to Salafiyya if we do not strive our collective best to rectify Salafiyya and return those ignoramuses to the garden of knowledge and manners. Cultivate them upon loving goodness for people, politeness in speaking, respecting the scholars, understanding the thick of priorities, attaching importance to the situation of the ummah, attaching them to the gatherings of the scholars, and attaching importance to the books of the well-known imams and their statements and beliefs. SubhanAllah. Those are some high-powered statement. Uh, that's a high-powered statement right there, that if we were to, we could dis dissect that and spend uh, a lot of time, which I don't want to do, but I want you to reflect on these things. This sheikh wrote this very beneficial treatise for this reason and we can gain immense benefit if we listen and practice. If we listen and understand, it will clear up so much confusion. So many people ask questions, they even ask questions, am I even, if, about themselves. Do you think I'm still Salafi? I went with this person. I've had people ask me this question. Do you think I'm still Salafi? The brother said this about me and I, 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 I walked here. I went to that masjid. I, I, I listened to so-and-so's tape, I didn't know. Am I still Salafi? What kind of strange uh, Sesame Street questions are these? Sesame Street questions, because it's just gharib. It's so strange, these kind of Twilight Zone uh, kawaid, that all of a sudden you're off Salafi because you listen to so-and-so. Or even if you went to so-and-so's lecture, all of a sudden you're no longer Salafi? Maybe you didn't know. Maybe you... Whatever the case may be, there was some weakness. Maybe you knew they're from Ahl Bid'ah, but you had a curiosity. Does that make you all of a sudden you're not on the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Khalas, Intahayna? This is the importance, uh, Habib Tifillah, that we have to understand that it's not easy just to throw someone off the Sunnah like many of the people do. Wallahu Musta'an. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with a class with Thabat. Then the Shaykh said, Have mercy upon Salafiyyah. Salafiyyah is not only Jarwa Ta'deel finding pitfalls, investigating mistakes, and appointing ignorant youth to these responsibilities. Salafi is not being negligent about knowledge and righteous actions, calling to Allah 
and loving goodness for people. Huh. So he said, Selafia, sorry, Selafia is not being negligent, negligent about knowledge and righteous actions. Calling to Allah and loving goodness for people. Huh. So what he's saying here, Habitatullah, is that he's saying, Selafia, it's not being <clears throat> letting ignorant youth are not the ones who formulate these kawaii and principles and, and have the uh, the the authority to take people off the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. And Salafiyah is not about being remaining ignorant. And Salafia is not about sinfulness, being immersed in sins, but yet you you you're supposedly a a, a, a da'i of Jarwa Ta'deel. But Salafia instead is calling to Allah and loving goodness for people. This is what the Prophet wasallam. In fact, Salafia, we should be first and foremost. The people should be loving us, even if they don't follow our path. Because they should say, man, those Salafis have such good manners, even though they refute our imams and this and this and this, and they refute the bid'ah, but we see how they deal with the general people, that they're so good with the layman, and they're so adherent to the sunnah of the message of Allah wasallam. Where's that? We don't hear the people say that about many of the Salafi du'ad around the world will understand. The number of scholars of the Salaf is only known to Allah. Jarwa Ta'deel in clarifying the situation of men is a communal responsibility for the people of knowledge. Taqwa, piety, sincere and sincere advice for the Muslims. They are the people who know what necessitates a jarah and what Ta'deel means. A jarah meaning a criticism and Ta'deel meaning uh, to, uh, to praise someone. They are the people who can Islamically proportion the punishment by way of harshness, boycotting, cutting off, and rebuking. Meaning that this is reserved for Ahl al-Ilm. Just think how many people want to get involved in these issues and want to make tibdi of people and want to cut off people who don't know much, don't, might not even recite Surah Al-Fatiha properly. And I, I've mentioned this countless times in past lectures about people, real case scenarios where we know people who were supposedly so good in their English-speaking communities in Jarwa Ta'deel, but they couldn't read the Qur'an properly. They made mistakes in some of the most basic ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, is this Salafiyya? Is that da'wah to Ahl Sunnah? Is that da'wah to the Minhaj of the Salaf? The Shaykh then says, <clears throat> As for today, the affair of the Salafis is that everybody has become a person who disparages and praises. Everybody criticize, criticizes everybody else. This difficult field has been traversed upon by every docile person. Every foolish young person speaks regarding these matters. Every lowly ignoramus, in fact, even a person who has just reverted to Islam, he does not know anything about the basics of the Sharia, the principles of the religion, nor the rulings of Tahara, purification, and Salat. He enters into Islam on the basis of it is an obligation to show loyalty to so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so, and be an enemy to so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so, and frequents forums and gatherings of qil, waqal, rumor mongering and hearsay. SubhanAllah, that, that's high powered and I want you to reflect on this. Reflect on the speech of the, of the Shaykh. We could think of countless examples, but I think it's clear. A person becomes known due to what he frequently does, due to their actions, Ears refuse to listen to their statements. Eyes hate to see what they put forth. And righteous, pious souls hate their sittings. In fact, even their Twitter accounts and websites. This is not Salafiyah. So that's why it's important for us, Ahabatullah, to know what Salafi is. We have to know the call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distinguish it from the call of Hezbiyah to calling to your crew, your clique, your, your group, or whoever. It's very important that we have that 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 ilm al nafia that beneficial knowledge which stems from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what the salaf were united upon this is what's going to bring us that salvation and practicing it and practicing it so all of those things about manners and stuff that's a part of salafia that's a part of the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than righteous manners. And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So if that is what weighs heaviest on us, the scale of the believers, 
Because who said it? Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it. If that is one of the things that weighs heaviest on the scale of a believer, then that's surely something we have to give importance, isn't it? And what is that? That's husn al khut. That means all that ma'roof, all those good manners from smiling to giving salams to uh, being nice to your neighbors, to be to serving your mother and your 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 bitter walidain, to serving your parents and being obedient to them, to all the various forms of, of righteousness and piety and wara and all those other uh, great uh, immense trends and, and zuhud. All of those things are those things which are going to weigh heaviest on your scale. So that shows us that it's not a quick and easy thing. You should not rush and race to cut off your brothers and sisters for something simple. Boycotting. This is not a, a light thing. This should be looking at, as the, as the many ulama they mention when they get into these issues, they say, Mabni ala masale wa mafasid. That when you talk about boycotting, cutting someone off and not giving them salams anymore, not sitting with them or whatever, that these issues, they are built upon looking at the harms and the benefit. And that takes what? That takes fiqh fi deen. It takes knowing and understanding some fiqh of the religion on how to apply those principles and how to apply those qawaid and usul, usul ahl sunnah. The shaykh then says, a person becomes known due to what he frequently does, due to their actions, ears, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Then he says, have mercy upon Salafiyya. Yes, we warn against innovations and specific people of innovation. We clarify their situation. We expose their mistakes. We do this in every possible manner and avenue, visual, audio, and written. However, this is done with knowledge, justice, intelligence, not with ignorance, oppression, and carelessness. So that shows us a habit of Allah that when we refute, refutation should be when it's necessary to refute, someone has made a mistake, someone or refuting from Ahl Bid'ah, that it is done with, it's always done with justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be just. Qaim al That we, we have to be, you know, establishing justice. And this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the Madhab of the Salaf, that we should be just. And likewise, we should not lie and cheat to make your case. You don't have to make your case. You don't have to say, well, so-and-so is already a Hizbi. I need to lie and exaggerate so that way we can get the people to turn against him. And I'm telling you, I promise you, really a thinking person should be able to look at all the various reputations out there. And so many, like if you want to mention from even amongst du'a, even some people who I know who have a lot of knowledge, who I respect as strong students of knowledge, it amazes me how weak their reputations are when they refute somebody from Ahl Bidah or when they refute another Salafi that they claim is a Mubtadi'ah or they claim you should not listen to. Well, I, a lot of their arguments are so weak that you should, if you had common sense even, you could see because their arguments aren't really strongly Islamically grounded. And so then that means a thinking person, if, if you don't detect much Islam, even from a logical pro point, you would say that's a weak argument of, uh, in, in Jahiliyyah or in, in, in philosophical argument or whatever kind of argumentation tools you see how weak it is because a lot of times it's based on desires it's not based on ilm of fiqh and it's not based on going back to those qawaid in a soul that's, that's what's imperative and you even find that from scholars wallah mistan for those who read Arabic you will find this I've, I've collected so many of those kind of books because I like those books just to see I like to see who's writing elmi and who's not and you will see a lot of the books where you see rudud and refutations you'll see their arguments they use and you see the english speaking audience copying it and the and the amharic speaking audience copying it and the oromo speaking audience copying it and the somali uh, speaking audience copying it and the indonesian speaking audience copying it that it goes it filters around the world they copy the same style they make for example, a person who you're refuting says, yes, this is a, this is a rock. And, and so the person will say, a rock, a rock, and they'll put it in a hyperbolic language. How can they say that's a rock? That is the tool of the Hizbis to say that that's a rock. And I know that was an exaggeration or I blew it totally out of proportion, but I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to make a point and I hope that point is clear that so many of the people they refute and their refute are not knowledge-based. And their, refu their refutations 
are not uh, knowledge based and they're not uh, so we say they're not enemy and sometimes they make something out of absolutely nothing then the sheikh said our scholars who preceded us said to us warn against them and then seek protection and pardon for yourselves remain upright upon knowledge and action the warnings that occur from some of the school scholars those who fulfill the fard al kifaya are sufficient as long as they fulfill the objective and the evidence becomes established after this the true salafi turns to knowledge and righteous actions in order to remove him from himself ignorance and laziness as for the beginners and new muslims preoccupying themselves with refutations and counter refutations and criticizing people and groups then this is from the severest diseases a waste of knowledge and actions so it's very important that we don't spend all of our times caught up in that which is secondary knowledge over the awliyat over the first hand uh, the first uh, the most the, the knowledge that takes precedence that we have to go with those things first and foremost that are going to teach you how to practice your religion and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those other things are higher level of uh, of understanding certain furur and to defend the usul of the religion but they're not for everyone to, to, to get involved in and this is you know there's countless statements of the salaf and there's countless statements of our, our ulama the mu'asirin that would exhaust our time to go into uh, those many statements and we've we've already put put them out you can find them they're out there tons of statements and so many of the websites now alhamdulillah some of the salafi websites they've translated many of the scholars the modern day scholars and uh, uh, imam muqbil statements about hizbiya and about salafi and about making tibdi of people easily uh, imam fozan imam bin baz imam uh, bin uthaymin bi kathra there's so many beautiful statements and it would it, it, it seems when we look at the fitna that we live in now it's almost as if some of those imams are still alive because what they were speaking about is so relevant to what's going on tonight today and then you see so many people claiming salafia and they don't go to those big imams how many statements of bin Uthameen do you see that they translate but instead they go with scholars that have knowledge but are much less than knowledge and than bin Uthameen. bin Uthameen was an imam he's an imam <coughs> in this time <coughs> if you look at his books and what he's produced and those who know Arabic, they know what I'm talking about. They know what, exactly what I'm saying. They can go into those books. So I can't even, um, can't even, and I'm not exaggerating. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. When you read his books, you, you have to sit down. You have to sit down all the fawaid. So don't, so benefit yourself with that which is good. Then the Shaykh said, to the extent that some of them have memorized the statements of Sayyid Qutb, Salman al Uda, Swaydan, uh, Tariq Swaydan, who's a Kuwaiti uh, guy, and other people of misguidance, so much so that it is like they have memorized Matun, classical texts of knowledge. However, had they directed their determination to actual Matun, then it would be better for them only if they knew this. And so here the Shaykh is, is bringing up a very important point, and this goes with even from I uh, with um, is that you find many individuals they know more about Sayyid Qutb and refuting Sayyid Qutb and talking about Ikhwan and Muslimin than they know really what about the Qawaid of Ahl Sunnah or that they know about the Imams of the Salaf and even more severe of an example or a more uh, uh, indicative in example to illustrate this point is there so many they don't even know tahara they don't even know some basic dua and supplication but yet they know intricately that Sayyid Qutb said such and such and that he had some wahtatu wujud according to some ulama and that he said this in milestones they know intricately uh, intricately about those things likewise they know intricately about other people they know Tahir Wyatt did a conference uh, with so and so that uh, Muhammad Munir did this they know that Abu Khadija said this they know that the Medhalis did this they know all of these things and they know intricately and can give you verbatim about what happened in Brixton and about happened this but they they don't know much of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't know the tafsir of Qul Allahu Ahad 
or whatever the case may be. And these are not, this is not just me throwing this out. This is so relevant. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm and nafi, rizq and tayyib, amal and mutakabbil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhanaka lahumma wa bihamdika. Asharu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.